I'm going to go over the tools to manage and evaluate diet. This is module two in your textbook and what we're going to discuss is information that's found that will help you to determine what is the best way to make decisions on your diet. And I'm also going to give you information that will help you with your diet project that's due later in the semester. Um, on the left here you can see what the recommendations were between 1956 and 19, during the 1970s, the daily food guide. On the right is kind of an assessment of what folks were eating during the depression. Pretty low on vegetables and fruit, pretty high on protein. There's a lot more information in module two than what we're going to cover, but this is what I want you to know, what we're covering here. Please feel free to read whatever you want that's in the book and beyond. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, I'm interested. I'm going to cover nutrient labels, alphabet soup, my plate, and the exchanges. And again, within this information will be reference materials and information that you can use for your diet analysis project. Under nutrient labels, we'll look at the anatomy of the food label, the daily values, how to assess fat content, nutrient density, I'll explain what that is. If you're watching the calories in your diet, nutrient density is important. And we'll look at how the ingredients on a food label are listed, as well as some of the terms that can be found on food labels. I'm going over the nutrient facts panel that's usually found if you're looking, say, at a box of cereal on the side. Foods that contain more than one ingredient are required to display this panel and there's specific information that's required. I'm going to ask you in class what it is that you look at when you're food shopping and looking at food labels. One of the things I hear from students is after they take this class they take a lot more time to go food shopping because they look at food labels. Up here at the top is the serving size and in my opinion it's the most important thing on the food label and we'll talk about why. Then you have the calories calories from fat. These percentages here are the percent daily value shown how the food fits into the overall diet and I'll talk about where these numbers come from. On the left are the different nutrients, fat, total fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium. This is four nutrients, two vitamins and two minerals that have been shown to be most likely to be lacking in diet of today's consumers and so they show you in the particular product that you're looking at, how much of that nutrient you get. However, they show it in terms of a percentage, and what I'll do is show you how you calculate, take that percentage and calculate it into grams or milligrams, and this will be helpful for some of you if you use food labels for your diet project. These, this DV label here, percent daily values, the numbers, the percentages are based on 2,000 calories. Uh, your needs may vary. And if you are somebody who consumes an average of 2,500 calories or more per day, uh, I'd like you to make sure that you use these numbers when you do your diet project and just let me know that this is how you're basing your information. So the DRVs, these numbers are based on current recommendation. So if it's currently recommended that we get 30%, in this case, 29% of our calories from fat. I think they went with these numbers because it, it looked nicer. 29% of 2,000 calories turns out to be 65 grams a day. A third of fat calories should come from saturated fat. So here is where 9% or 20 grams comes from. Cholesterol is recommended to be 300 milligrams Carbohydrate, if 60% of your calories are supposed to come from carbohydrate, 60% of 2,000 is 1,200 calories. And if we divide 1,200 calories by 4, which is how many calories you get in a gram of carb, that's where the 300 comes from, and so on. This will be your reference table for when you're doing your diet project. Foods can be classified according to fat content. Things can be high fat, moderately fat, or low fat. Foods don't usually label themselves as high fat though, so we'll talk about what they need in order to be labeled low fat, and generally that's less than 25% of their calories from fat. This can also be applied to diets. We all know there are high fat diets, high carb diets, low fat diets, low carb diets. So how do you calculate percent fat by calories? 
This is the formula that you use and let's put that into practice. If you're looking at a particular label, in this case peanuts, if the serving size is a third of a cup in shells, the total calories are 150. According to this part of the label, the fat calories are 100. But as we'll see shortly, it's not always the case. We're going to use this number here, 12 grams of total fat. We take that 12 grams of fat, multiply it by 9 calories per gram of fat, and we get 108 calories that come from fat. We divide that 108 by the total number of calories in the serving. So we have 108 fat calories divided by 150 total calories times 100, and that gives us 72%. So 72% of the calories in a serving of a third of a cup of shelled peanuts comes from fat. So we would classify peanuts as a high fat food. Not really a surprise. But let's say you want to calculate the percent of fat by weight or by volume. Say you've been buying lots of frozen yogurt because it says it's 97% fat free and that sounds like a really good deal. They must be using skim milk in order to be able to have that label as 97% fat free. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's dissect that information. My apologies for the fuzzy label, but what I want you to look at if we're looking at fat, we have 8 grams of fat. That's what you want to look at, and you want to look at the serving size. In this case, one, one cup or 240 mils. For our purposes, we're going to say that mils is equal to grams in order to calculate that percentage. So we have 8 grams of fat divided by 240 grams in a serving. Multiply that by 100 for the percentage, and we get 3.3% of the calories in a cup of milk, of whole milk, comes from fat, which makes whole milk, by the way, 96.7% fat free. So when you see this number, whole milk is 96.7% fat free by weight, not by calories. Your 97% fat free yogurt is not calorie free. It has the same amount of calories, the same amount of fat that's found in whole milk. Maybe that's why you're not losing weight with all the frozen yogurt you've been eating. This is a table of the RDIs, or what I call the RDAs, for the micronutrients, our vitamins and minerals. While I am not asking you to memorize this information, I certainly don't know it all without looking at a table. What I'm asking you to look at are the units, milligrams, micrograms, what are called international units, what I want you to get a sense of is that these units are much smaller than the recommendations for the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. In a few minutes, I'll show you that the minimum recommendation for carbohydrates is 130 grams per day or 130,000 milligrams. If we look at vitamin C, vitamin C is 60 milligrams. That's 60 milligrams for vitamin C compared to 130,000 milligrams of carbohydrate. That's a huge difference. That doesn't mean that vitamin C is not important compared to carbohydrates. It just means that you need a lot less of it in order for the vitamin C to meet the needs of our body and for the functions of vitamin C. Nutrient density is something that folks who may be watching their weight are interested in. And this is the nutrients found per calorie. So what you're looking at are two different 500 calorie, I hesitate to call them both meals, but on the left we have your toast, your eggs, your, let's call it a turkey sausage, fruit, cereal, all for 500 calories. And on the right we have two chocolate sprinkle donuts and a cup of coffee. I like that they have coffee in both meals for breakfast. These are about equal number of calories, but what's significantly different are the amount of nutrients found in each meal. I believe you can determine which one is more dense in nutrients. This is looking at a 500 calorie meal. If we look at 100 calories of liquid, let's just compare 1% milk, whole milk, and a cola beverage, since we don't want to have any brand names mentioned. We have 100 calories of each of these beverages. You can see 1% milk, 
whole milk, and cola. Does this mean you should never have cola? No, I would never tell you never to drink a cola beverage. But if you're watching your calories or you're concerned about your nutrient intake, which of course I know all of you are, then on the whole, your choices should be more towards nutrient dense. And when I say on the whole, and we'll talk about this more during the semester, I'm not saying every, every day, although that's certainly a good recommendation, but on the average. Now, for those of you who are looking at this part, the food label for something that you like to eat and you're going to include in your diet project, then you can't find the, that number. Let's talk about how to make the calculations. If we look down here and see that this particular food, I guess it's a cereal, contains 25% of the recommendation of vitamin C. What does that mean? How many milligrams of vitamin C are found in one serving of this food? Well, we know from a previous slide that the daily recommendations for vitamin C are 60 milligrams. So if we take 25% of that, we find that in one serving of this cereal, you get 15 milligrams of vitamin C. That's 15 milligrams per serving. And that can be helpful when you are figuring out information for your diet project. The ingredient list also found on the food labels the ingredients are listed in descending order of predominance by weight, not importance of the food or the ingredient, but by weight. So in this particular food, and I think this must still be the cereal, the heaviest ingredient or the one that can be found in the highest amount are whole oats. Then we have corn, flour, sugar, different types of sugars, the ever-present high fructose corn syrup, coconut oil, and down here we have the vitamins and the minerals. And it makes sense that vitamins and minerals would be found in the smallest amount because as we said previously, it's not that they're not important, but we don't need as much of them in order for these nutrients, these vitamins and minerals to perform the necessary functions in our body. Some of the terms that are allowed to be on food labels, something can be listed as free, like cholesterol free or fat free, if it has negligible amounts per serving. Now one thing I want to talk to you about is the this is trans fatty acids per serving. A product is allowed to say that it is trans free if it contains less than 0.5 grams of trans fatty acids per serving. Now suppose this food label said it contained partially hydrogenated coconut oil. Those words themselves, partially hydrogenated, mean that the product contains trans fatty acid because the process of partial hydrogenation results in the formation of these fatty acids. However, if a serving, one serving of that product contains less than 0.5 grams, which means it could contain 0.49 grams, it may be, by law, allowed to list it as trans-free. Products can also use the, the terms reduced or less, light or L-I-T-E. This is my favorite and because it can be lighter in color or texture compared to the original product and still be allowed to be listed as light. So I think, ladies and gentlemen, that if your Bud Light oops, was listed as Bud L-I-T-E, you'd want to look at the calories because it might simply be lighter in color. Here's some other terms which will be helpful for you when you're sitting around having drinks with your friends and talking about what you learned in nutrition this week. What I do want you to just remember is that when we talk about three and a half ounce servings, particularly pertaining to meat, cheese, animal products, we're usually referring to 100 grams of a serving. The food package labels use nutrient panels, the facts panels that contain the dietary recommendations, the latest recommendations. To determine whether a food is high in fat, you calculate the percent calories from fat. Nutrient density refers to the amount of nutrients per calorie. Ingredients are listed in descending order by predominance of weight or volume. And there are specific definitions of terms that can be used on food labels.